Lip filler migration is still here, probably more prevalent than ever, and I actually think it's one of the reasons why a lot of people are hesitant in getting dermal fillers in the first place. But don't worry, because you're here today, I'm going to share with you all the reasons why it happens and everything you need to know in order to help prevent that happening to you. Let's get right into it. So before we begin, I'm Dan Julian, nurse practitioner for Dan Aesthetics Medical and our clinic is located here in Ottawa. And if you're serious about medical aesthetics, consider joining my Patreon. It's designed for serious providers just like you. Lip filler migration, reason number one, and I'm not blaming the medical aesthetics providers because a lot of the reps and companies tell us that lip filler or any hyaluronic acid filler tends to break down fully after about a year, your body excretes it and you're free to replenish annually where that's really not the case. And you shouldn't be doing that because lip filler or any hyaluronic acid filler tends to lose its shape after about a year. But what happens is the hyaluronic acid ends up breaking down and integrates into the tissues. It integrates into the skin, superficial fat pads, deep fat pads, sometimes even into the muscles. And as a result, it acts as like this long-term synthetic hydrator. So if you use a mild to moderate amount, that actually could be great because maybe after one round and then a couple minor top-ups, that could be all you necessarily need for several years. It's whenever people are under the impression that you need to refill with almost the same amount of product annually, and without dissolving, then what happens is not only does it integrate into the tissues, but it backs up and it builds up. And as a result, your lips start changing from a nice hydrated plump lip to a hydrated plump lip that's sticking out like this, because all this is now too volumized and it's backed up. Reason number two, movement. Hyaluronic acid dermal fillers will move if it's placed in an area where there's a lot of movement. So when you're looking at the face, the most movement is going to be around the mouth, that's for sure. Everything that you're doing, talking, eating, chewing, is causing that filler to move micro increments daily. And as a result, some people end up having their whole lips filled their first time. They come back after three or four months, like I swear, it's like my body just ate it all. Like I, I don't even see it anymore. Where really what's happened is likely it's moved from the front of the muscle to either on top or underneath. And that is from the movement. It's literally gripping it and moving it back oh so slightly. Now there are things that you can do to help that out. I usually recommend a little bit of neuromodulator around the mouth just to minimize some of the movement and that can help too. Reason number three, injection technique. And I'm not saying that you should be blaming your provider when it comes to migration of lip filler. Most of this happens for multiple reasons. For example, this is your dry border of the lip. This is called the vermilion, the red part that you see. The border on top of it is called the vermilion border, and it's also known as the white roll. When you flatten the lip, you'll see like a little white line right here. This is a border that separates the ergotrid, which is this part here, and the vermilion. The second border is the wet dry border, which is this part right here. So there's the dry part, and underneath there's wet. So this is two different borders that you do not want to cross or break whenever you're doing lip filler injections to decrease your chance of migration. For example, lip tenting technique. If it's done poorly, you could ask for two different types of lip filler migration in one setting. So your tenting technique is going to go from the top to the bottom. It's encouraged to usually place drops at the bottom and that could be at the wet dry border or maybe just inside the wet border. If you wanna help a little M-shaped lip, that could cause migration underneath. And whenever you're placing the needle in, if you're coming from in the vermilion border or just on the outside, well, guess what? The filler is going to travel up that channel and it's going to migrate outside of the lip. Another way to cause migration. The last thing is the depth. If you're placing filler too deep into the muscle, well, you're already placing it in an area where the muscle is going to grip it and move it back into an area of least resistance, which is up here. This muscle is thinner and weaker than this muscle. So if you're placing it too far back, it's just gonna migrate right away. These are all different variables. There's no one technique that's better than others. I think this is very much something that, you know, is a personal choice with regards to aesthetic look. However, there are certain things that you can do to decrease your chance of having lip filler migration if it's really important for you. Reason number four, the brand and the rheology of the filler that we are using to place in the lips. And rheology is just a fancy word for saying the lip filler type that we're choosing. Every brand has a line of fillers ranging from very thin to very thick and everything in between. 
and it's our job to choose what's appropriate with regards to brand and thickness for that client. Because they all vary. Some brands, they don't draw in a lot of water. What you see is what you get. But other brands tend to draw in a lot more water, 30% more water than what you see visually. So if you're going to, let's say, fill a client where they're like, I really want a nice juicy plump pout, and you feel this is like, okay, this is I think as much as we can handle here. If you used a brand of filler that tends to draw in a lot more water and you've already maxed out their lip, well, guess what? In six months, it's going to migrate because there's no room for it at the front. It will migrate in the back, and with one setting, you can have lip filler visible migration. And that's something that you definitely need to consider is choosing the brand and filler rheology. Which leads us to number five, overfilling the lip intentionally to try and expand the lip. Listen, that is a bad idea right off the bat because the lip is just like the skin. If you are going to stretch it out intentionally, you are literally aging your skin by 20 to 40 years within months because what you're doing is asking it to bypass the flexibility, the elasticity, everything that you're building, which is your type one and type three collagen that's keeping your skin firm and youthful looking, you're basically pulling it and stretching it apart to the point where it can't function anymore. And as a result, it gives and then you can grow the lip. You really don't want to do that because first of all, it takes several times in order to really grow the lip and with your first couple of attempts, you're asking for migration right away. Just like I said before, right? If there's no room for the lip filler, it's either going to expand the lip or it's going to migrate back. And it usually does both at the same time. So be mindful of that, don't overfill your lip. What you're looking to do is just enhance your lip slightly, moderately, and therefore you will have a real nice consistent lip with a nice little plump that's not going to give you headaches later on. Because the worst case scenario is that you've expanded your lips to the point where you have to keep them inflated, otherwise, they'll just look shriveled very similarly to what people did when they expanded their earlobes. You put spacers in them, you expand them, you expand them, and then whenever they're 40 or 50, they're not doing that anymore, and then they regret it because they have this huge hanging earlobe, and the only way to fix it is surgery. And surgery for the lip for that never looks good. So that's it for me, guys. Until the next time, take care of yourselves, exercise daily, and please be nice to absolutely everyone. Take care.